And we're back. Welcome if you just joined us. If you saw our tour video and decided you want to be a subscriber, I will let you know right now, our camper does not look like the tour video. We are on day zero of getting back to Baja. Super excited, gonna bring you along. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, leave us a positive comment, any questions you may have. Today's goal is to cross into Baja, Mexico, through Mexicali East. There are two entrances into Mexico through Mexicali, and we're gonna go through the east entrance. You have to get there by two, so we've heard. All the things we're gonna share with you today are all about speculation until we actually show you how it's done. If it sounds like there's trucks swinging by and uh, driving by really fast, and if it sounds like there's a truck sitting right next to us, and if you can see in my eyes or hear my voice that I didn't sleep last night, you probably guess it's because we're sleeping in a truck stop. Not glamorous, but that's life on the road for Called to Wander. How you feel about that, baby? I'm ready for tank top and shorts weather. You're already in tank top yes. and shorts. We do have coffee brewing. Hip hip hooray. This is our magnificent AeroPress, featured multiple times. Star of the show today. Pour a little hot water in there. Let it drip, drip, drip. Boom, boom, boom. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> and the Gorilla Glue in the background. With the Gorilla Glue in the background. Let me give you a quick tour of the camper. It's a mess. That's Lindsay. She's the thing that's not a mess. That's Everest. She's got a hole in her butt. I'll show you more about that later. She looks like a baboon. Yep. She got in a little... A little skr skr scuffle, skr scuffle. We have a tire. And uh, yeah, we got. In the middle uh, of our living room. We have a tire in the middle of our living room. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later. Our traction pads, uh, they get to go on the back of the camper, but this tire we're actually delivering for somebody in Baja. There's Huckleberry wedged down there. Um, and then here's Ever's little place to ride on the couch, so she doesn't lick her butt or get her butt stitches stuff on the couch. That's probably TMI. I know it's TMI for us because we have to um, we have to wipe her butt. Yeah. I mean, we don't have kids, you know that by now. If you don't know that, we don't have kids. We don't understand the joys of changing diapers and all that stuff. I think I've changed one diaper in my life and I vowed I would never do it again. How many do you have? I've changed a few. Lindsay's Not a lot, but Lind a few. Okay, so when it comes to our <laughs> dogs, our dogs are our children. You either love us for that or you hate us for that. It doesn't really matter to me, but our dogs are children. And so instead of wiping butts and changing diapers, we now get to wipe oh, Everest sorry. butt and pat it down. So anyway, not a fun story for taking care of her, but she's our dog. We love her to death. And that's what we're going to do here behind the magic curtains. Lindsay talked about these in the tour, but this is how they work. Bada bing, bada boom. There is the front. You can't really see, it's dark. But uh, we got all of our drive stuff up front. Very important. Paperwork. This is the printed receipt for our FMMs. We will talk more about that maybe in a later video all about crossing the border, but super important. Last time when we crossed into Baja via Tecate, we had our FMM all paid for, but we didn't have our receipt printed out in hand. So now I've printed it out. I got two copies and Takate we had to pay for another FMM and we didn't want to do that this time. We're only paying for one per person for 180 days, which we fully intend to use almost. In any regard, there goes the truck telling us it's time to get going on the road. We will check in with you shortly as we get to the next steps of this journey into Baja, Mexico. Our goal is to get to San Felipe our friend Lynn has an awesome ranch just north of town where she does equine therapy. Our goal is to reach her today and then tomorrow. She's got kids coming, so we're gonna get out there and we're gonna go help uh, take care of these kids on the horses and have a blast helping out and serving and giving you information and opportunities for you if you happen to be in San Felipe or there's something that interests you, um, just a two hour hop across the border. In any regard, check in later. Boom, just like that, we're at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> why is going to Walmart a good idea before you go to Mexico? I don't know. Why? Because there are some things that you're not going to find in Baja yeah. that you may need, 
or want. Like Lindsay can't have dairy products, particularly in her creamer, so she has to buy non-dairy creamer. Um, and then there's of course the things that you want to have, and then of course there's the things that you got to do to bribe people in Mexico. When I say bribe people, I don't mean bribe the federales with these. <laughs> or, or do I mean Pretty that? Chewy. There's rumors yes. about that. We're not going to promote that. I keep them by the driver's seat on purpose so that I can roll my window down and eat one when <laughs> I pass the federales. <laughs> In any regard, we are at Walmart. We did our last minute shopping, got everything topped off. There are some things we'll talk about more specifically probably in a later video of very specific preparations that we do. Um, but we got all of our, all of our medicine. We got all of our first aid stuff. We got most of the things you can find in Baja, but we still got some of our, our yeah, favorite stuff. Yeah, we stocked stuff. up. So, um, what's that in your hand right there? It is our passports. All right, so Lindsay has our passports. Yep. It's time for us to go find the border. So we're gonna need our passports. We're going to need our paperwork that shows both that we paid for our FMM, which is our tourist visa. They're good for Americans, for US citizens, and I believe Canadians as well, for 180 days. So just shy of six months. And uh, oh, on the back of that is verification of our insurance. Yep. Because you have to have liability insurance at the very least in Mexico. So there's ours. We got it through Baja Bound. We've got a link below um, in the description for Baja Bound. You should go there because they have the best prices, the best service. Um, this is a commercial for them because we're also affiliates for them. But we're affiliates because we believe in the product. They did a great job for us before. We didn't have any incidents, um, but the lowest rates that we could possibly have, and we've shopped other companies like MexPro as well. Um, so anyway, we'll do a video on that too because our insurance is really cool, how we were able to save a bunch of money. Um, oh, what else do we have? This book contains- All of our dogs. Dog stuff. Our vet records. Dogs must show proof of rabies vaccinations. Both of our dogs were recently vaccinated. We've got the paperwork to prove it. Yeah, and, and you the don't pictures. you don't need a health certificate. They have they made that like if you look it up, it used to you used to need to have it. They never checked for it, but now they don't need it at all. So don't worry about that. But if you have kids, you probably want to get them rabies vaccinated as well. Um, just make sure you have the paperwork for that. You know, just kidding. We don't have kids dogs are kids you know that already because i've already said that so we have their paperwork if you have kids make sure you have proof that they are your kids um and the last thing that i have here is bribe money if everything else goes wrong in this whole endeavor i have 50, 17 1800 pesos right here that's the equivalent of 90 dollars. that should get us all over the place i'm just joking these are mexican pesos from our last trip always good to have on hand if you haven't been there before then um, you're gonna wanna get them as soon as you can when you cross the border. Another video coming on that because there's all kinds of tips and tricks for getting the best rates on your ATM withdrawals. Um, it is mostly cash-based society. So if you plan on swiping credit cards everywhere, you will be sadly mistaken. On that note, let's get the heck on out of Walmart parking lot. Yes, let's I'm go, ready to get to Mexico. Let's go find the border crossing. Again, we're gonna go to Mexicali East. Um, which should get us hooked up with the five pretty quickly, and the five will take us right on down to San Felipe. So let's go do this. Well, in case you enjoyed that flavor of us sounding like we knew exactly what we were doing, like we were tour guides to the Mexico experience, I want to let you know we went the wrong way. Not like the wrong way on a wrong one-way street, but we went in the wrong entrance, which really wasn't an entrance to Mexico, it was an entrance back into the United States. <laughs> so the kind lady turned us around and we are going into Mexico right now. We're hitting all of these bumps, which in Espanol and Baja is called a tope. There's no signs for the topes yet. So once we get to that a little bit later on in this uh, season, probably in the next episode or so, there's topes everywhere yep. and in Baja. they're awful. And they are awful. They are speed bumps. They come out of nowhere. Like I've seen a ninja guy come out and throw one down on the road 
and you have to like jump over it. So keep in mind, don't drive at night is rule number one in Baja. Rule number two is don't drive at night. Rule number three is watch out for topes. So, Look at all the people coming back in the U.S. Yep. Ooh, that's a long line. We waited in that line. Yeah, we've before. done that before. We've been here before, but in that direction. So, we're going to go ahead and sign off for the time being. We got the dash cam rolling. We'll see what happens. Because I got no clue what's going next. Well, that was fun. <laughs> that was an ordeal. <laughs> we thought we had it all figured out yeah. after last time. If you go back and watch uh, one of, I think, season one of, or season two, episode one, when we crossed in Tecate, we printed the form that we needed to have, the actual FMM, but we didn't print the receipt. So they made us fill out a new one and pay. And pay again. Again. So this time I'm like, no, 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 no. You're not tricking me. <laughs> so the receipt comes up and I print receipt, but there was no option to print the form out. So we go into immigration and we hand them the receipt. I'm so proud of myself. I'm like, I printed two copies of the receipt. I'm like, you can keep one yourself. I'm gonna keep one too. I was so happy. And then he's like, where's the form? And he said this in Spanish, I understood. Yeah. And uh, I'm like, uh, what form? He's like, where's your form? I didn't, I told him I didn't have the option. So we had to pull up our email, go through all this stuff. He called in some help. All kinds of crazy stuff. We waited an hour and a half. Yeah. And they're really awesome, really amazing yeah, people. Yeah, thankfully they, they helped. And the, the guy in Tecate nice. was like, he was not helping at all. Like he was kind of, he was grumpy pants. But these people were amazing. So if you are the Ottawana in Mexicali East and you happen to be watching this, you're amazing. <laughs> We've appreciated all the attention. That's done. We got our paperwork. We cleared our inspection. The dogs are ready to go. We have a two and a half hour drive to get to the ranch in San Felipe to go see Lynn down there. So I say we go, what do you say? Yes. Anything else you want to say? No, just make sure you have your form and your receipt printed. Yeah. So you don't have to wait an hour and a half. We're learning. We thought we were, we thought we were learned already. Yeah. So third Ta time's a charm, I guess. Taco third time's time a charm. Yeah. Taco time's a charm. Yeah. It'd be nice to have some tacos. All right, we're going to hit the road. Well, we made it in for the night and uh, we were set up with our friend Lynn in El Dorado. Um, she's actually on iOverlander and is a harvest host and we'll also provide information down below because she does a really cool thing with um, equine therapy 
for kids with disability riding horses every week. Um, absolutely awesome. We're going to be doing that tomorrow. So we'll take you with, we'll take you with us there. Um, just want to wrap up the video really quick and remind you of some things about crossing the border, particularly if you're going to cross at Mexicali East. The first is make sure to do your paperwork in advance. Go through Baja Bound, buy your Baja Bound auto insurance. A six month policy is way cheaper than uh, anything shorter than that day by day, uh, unless you're only going for 10 or 12 days. Seven days are free in the state of Baja, um, but if you're staying longer, which most of you will, if you're having an RV, you're going to spend quite a bit of time there. So make sure you um, get your auto insurance. Baja Bound is who we recommend. We are affiliates, we throw that out there. Um, but also through Baja Bound, there's a link that you can click on that'll take you to purchase your FMM online. You wanna follow all of those steps. Complete the FMM, buy the receipt, uh, print the receipt, and also print the form. Be sure that your vehicle registration is up to date all the way through the time that you plan on staying. Just make sure you have the paperwork that shows that as well. We have a sticker on our license plate that shows that it's good for another two years. Our registration is good for two years. But somewhere in the paperwork, I lost the actual paper that showed that it was good. And so we had to kind of explain our way through that. Um, so make sure you have up-to-date registration. Awesome. Be sure to have your title um, so that you can show ownership of your vehicle if they ask that. We weren't asked that, but we had all of that prepared. If you're not transporting large amounts of goods for other than home living, so if you have a friend in Baja and you're bringing them a refrigerator, uh, you're going to want to go and declare that in customs. They'll ask you about that when they search your vehicle. An RV will get searched. We saw lots of cars come through, no problem, but RVs, every single RV while we were waiting was searched, sometimes more thoroughly than others. We were invited into that process, which I really appreciate. There are other times where you may not be invited in and you just can't take it personal. If you're not invited in, don't cause a stink. Um, but do your best to observe everything that's going on during the inspection. Um, don't hawk over the uh, border agent or at any of the checkpoints along the way. Um, but do be aware and do be watching and just try to facilitate and be kind and courteous and everything will go fine for that as well. But do plan on being inspected. Know what you can and cannot bring into Mexico. Obviously, drugs, firearms, and ammo are totally prohibited, but then there's limits on other things. Um, so like alcohol, you can only bring so much alcohol, but you're going to be buying tequila in Mexico anyway, so I don't know why you'd want to bring too much alcohol across the border. You also have uh, limitations on certain plants and definitely no live species of anything. Um, so check out all the requirements before if you have anything crazy you're bringing in. Medicine as well, if you have prescriptions, make sure you have documentation on those prescriptions. We have a whole lot of supplements, six months worth of supplements for Lindsay, and he opens this drawer and sees all of these bottles everywhere, and he's like, what is this? And he said it in Spanish, of course, so I had to try to explain it uh, in a way that he understood that this is six months worth of medicine for Lindsay, for my wife. So just some tips on crossing the border there. Once you get across, um, we found we've got AT&T service, so we had to put on uh, data roaming. And once we turned that on, it was no problem. We got perfect cell service. When we came across in Tecate two years ago, we didn't realize that until we were already in a panic of trying to get directions to go places. So once we did that, we just threw in San Felipe in our Google Maps and Google took us mostly the right way. The five starts in the middle of Mexicali. And so you got to drive a couple miles to get to it. And once you get on the five, you just take that straight on south. That's exactly what we did. Hopefully you've enjoyed this first of many episodes coming to you from Baja again, Baja Part Dos. Uh, we appreciate you taking time to watch. If you haven't already done so, subscribe to our channel. Please like this video, leave us a positive comment, ask any questions that we can answer in a positive way. I know there are some knuckleheads out there who say Mexico is dangerous and you shouldn't go to Mexico. And that's great. You don't go to Mexico. But we're here now and we want to show the rest of you who are interested in coming to Baja what it's like. The people are wonderful. The weather is amazing. The food is delicious. There's so many awesome, great things to do and the living's easy. So if you are interested, please make sure to stay tuned. Leave, leave us a positive comment or question and we'll be sure to try to answer that throughout the course of the next couple months as we are here in Baja, Mexico. We'll see you when we see you. That includes you, Felicia.